And we are here today to discuss, discuss the uh, course reserves and how you can access them and locate them and how they're working in a virtual semester. So if you have any questions throughout this, feel free to enter them into the chat and I'll answer them as I go along. Um, essentially to begin, I'm just gonna go over how course reserves normally work and um, how they will be working this semester and our new system for processing reserves since we are in a virtual setting. So to get started, um, typically, which you may be familiar with this if you're a returning student, typically you can just come to the circulation desk and get your uh, course reserve for a two hour checkout period. However, that is not possible this year. So we are processing uh, scans for students as requests come in. We are still reaching out to faculty and professors to get their input on what uh, textbooks they would like us to have on reserves. Typically our course reserve selection are more expensive textbooks um, in hopes that we can alleviate the financial burden that college students have. Uh, however, in recent years, we have gotten a lot more uh, novels and plays and essay books that don't cost so much, but that professors still require in their classroom just to help alleviate the financial burden of college. So I'm going to go over locating our course reserves. Um, over the summer, we did get a new library uh, catalog system. And so this may look different if you're a returning student from how you would access course reserves in the past. So on our WorldCat Discovery, that is our new catalog and how you can get to that. That might be a very good um, website for you to bookmark this semester if you have a research heavy semester. Through this, there, uh, this is where you'll do your general search for any um, books or films or music that you might want um, to find through the library. And this is going to have ebook options. It also has print book options. And it also has books that are not available at our library, but that are available at other libraries and that you can get shipped to our library through our library loan. However, you're going to go to the course reserves tab to access course reserves. This is the easiest, simplest way to find your specific uh, class or your instructor. And then after I show you this, I will also show you another way that um, some students prefer. So finding course reserves on WorldCat Discover, uh, you can use this search box. It's going to look different from the typical search box uh, that you see on the just plain WorldCat Discovery page. On the course reserves page, you can search by the course or the instructor or the department. So sometimes this is very useful if a student may not know the title of their book, but they remember that it was definitely for their biology class. Or they might know that they're taking a biology class, but they might not remember the exact one or how to spell their professor's name correctly. So you can type in bio and it'll come up with a list of options for the courses available. And then you can see which class looks like the right one. So, oh yes, Professor Laramore, that is our biology professor for bio 110. So once you visit that course page, it'll give you all the options for the books available. So looking specifically at this page, you can see that it lists the same textbook three different times, and that's because we have multiple copies of the same textbook. And so that way, if we are loaning a copy of a textbook to one student, there are still other copies available, and we are able to see that, and you are able to see that. Now, when you select the course page, it'll come up with the course title, which is Bio 110. It'll show you how many materials are available in this course. It'll tell you the professor's name. So this is Laramore, Patton, and Rogers. And then what uh, department this is the specific class is for. And so that's useful if you have multiple departments. Maybe you're taking a um, sociology class, but you don't remember what um, the specific course is. And so you can just type in, Google that uh, department, and then find your class that way. So for example, Anthropology 101, is it's a the same class, but it is taught from multiple departments. They both, Anthropology and Sociology, both use this course. So that's one method that you can just come and find your course page, and then you can look at what is available under that course. Another method is just going to the uh, McCain Library website, their homepage, and you'll see there are a lot of options um, 
on this page for places you can visit. However, you can easily find the WorldCat Discovery box by uh, clicking Find Books in the search bar tab down here. Or you can visit the catalog WorldCat button on the side here and it'll bring you all to the same um, website. Now, if you want to find course reserves from the library homepage, you would go to the Find Reserves tab, and here you can also search by the course or the instructor's name. So again, for an example, I'll show you Bio 110. That is a very easy go-to class, and it brings up exactly just that class. It doesn't give you all the options like you would see on the um, WorldCat course reserves page. So going back, um, those are just your two options for easy ways to locate your course reserves. You can find them through the library homepage or on worldcat.org. So I'm gonna show you the Anthropology 101 class because it's a great example of the different types of reserves we have. So just looking at these top two books, you'll notice that they both have a note on them. The note says to request electronic access to print books, please email access services at agnescott.edu. Now when you see that on a, uh, on a course reserve book or on any of the books in our catalog, that just means that we have a print copy available in the library, but we do not have an ebook copy available. So what we can do with these is we can still scan them if you put in a request for a, a chapter or a specific page range, we can still scan and give you access to that book for the two hours, just like we normally would if you were coming in and checking out the book. Now, when it's a book like Cultural Anthropology, that is the expensive textbook for the class. So that one will have actual uh, chapters that you might have readings for a certain day. However, if you look at Between the World and Me, that is a book of essays that is not divided into clear chapters. And so you may receive your uh, course reserves if you have to read the entire book maybe for um, one week's class. You may have to request that in increments of 50 pages or 40 pages and we can loan it to you that way as opposed to just sending you the full text of the book because it's a long book and it will take more than two hours to read. And that way after your two hours is up and you have lost your access to the book you're still able um, you can request the next section and receive it that way. And that way other students can also access the first selection or the first chapter. Now the note here does indicate that this is a print book, but if you scroll down, you'll see the third book, Homegirls Language and Cultural Practice Among Latina Youth Gangs is an ebook. So this means that you can just click on this link and it will open up in a new window with that book and you can read it there. However, there is, some, there are some limitations for the uh, ebooks in that sometimes all the only, we can only have one person access them at a time or we can have three people. Um, because this year we are in virtual classes, we tried to get access to, we tried to get unlimited access to our ebooks that we put on reserve so that as many students as possible could access them at the same time. But just keep in mind that if you have a reading um, for a class on Monday and it is Sunday evening and you see that it's an ebook, just keep in mind that maybe other people are also accessing that and there may be a limitation for how many people can view it at one time. And so just prepare um, and plan out when you're going to be able to do your readings just in case at a last minute um, if other students are using it you will have you will be aware. So you will also notice in this class, if we scroll down, that there are e-videos available. Now, occasionally professors like to have DVDs on reserve for their classes. And um, because this semester is virtual and not a lot of students are currently uh, living locally um, or on the campus, we're not able to have the DVDs go out every four hours like we normally would. So we did try to get access to as many um, streaming options as possible uh, to acquire these e-videos so that students can still watch them from home. Now some films we were unable to get and we only have in DVD and this is typically because they are very rare films and maybe they are not um, available to stream anymore. 
or it's just very expensive to get this um, film that we are only going to show for a small period of time. Now the professors have been great um, at working with us in this situation and they have, we have had several that have checked out films to show their class virtually and that, that way they can still uphold the copyright guidelines without um, having to require their students to purchase any films. So if you do have any questions about the films or about anything I've discussed so far, feel free to put it in the chat. I am going to go ahead and share a link in the chat. And this is just to um, a sign-in form. And essentially, if you fill this out, um, and if you have a professor that offers extra credit for att attending any of these courses, we'll be able to contact that professor and say, hey, this person came to our class today, um, and they should get the extra credit. So I'm going to move forward and explain our controlled digital lending process. So first of all, controlled digital lending is a mouthful, but what it is essentially is we are scanning chapters uh, from books and allowing you to our access to them um, in PDF form through our controlled digital lending platform. So this allows us to scan PDFs of textbooks, um, and other books without breaking the copyright limitations. So this works similarly to the course reserves in that you only have access to them for the two hours that you request access to them. And that way it allows other students to have fair access. So if someone wants to check out the cultural anthropology class or textbook, that is listed here, and we only have one copy of it in the library, we're only allowed to uh, give one student access to the scan. We cannot give other students access because in a normal um, environment, we would only have one copy to check out to that student. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you have a, um, a reading coming up for the weekend or for the week and you want to put in a request, just be aware that if there's only one copy of that book showing up under the course reserve page, then other students may also be requesting um, access to that. So how do you request a course reserve scan? If you want to get a scan of a certain chapter or a selection of pages, there are several ways that you can do this. One, which is very simple, is you can email the Access Services um, library and request those pages. So the Access Services library team, um, you, can access, you can email us just through accessservices at agnescott.edu. And then one of our team members will receive that email and will fulfill your request for you. So what you want to include in the scanning request is specific pages or chapters that you need. Um, you want to give us time in advance to scan them. You want to give us a time that you will want to access this document. So some situations that we've had this year um, have been students who have emailed us when the library is not open. So maybe um, sometime after 7 p.m. in the evenings and we don't see that request until the next morning and that's perfectly fine. However, they have requested that we get it to them as soon as possible. Well, we open at 8 the next morning. So when we check our email, we may not be able to process that request for a short amount of time after we open um, and that student may not need it at that time. They may still be in bed asleep at 8 a.m. They may be at work at 8 a.m. or they may be in a class for the next two hours. And so if we scan and share that document with them at 8.30 in the morning, they may not be able to access it then. So when emailing us your scanning request, give us a time frame that would work for you. So that if you know that you will be in class until 11 a.m. and you won't be able to get the reading until after that, we can share the doc uh, the scan request with you at 11 or 11.15. So an alternate method, this one has a bit more steps to it, but I will show you how to do it. So let's say you want to put a hold on the cultural anthropology textbook. What you can do when you go under the course page and locate this book is you can click on that and it will show up with all of the details for this book. Now you'll notice at the top here that I am not signed in. Um, 
However, I can still hit the place hold button that shows up underneath the availability. But when I click on that, if I'm not signed in, it's going to ask me to sign in. So make sure that you go ahead and sign in when you're on WorldCat. So I'm going to go back just to show you what I clicked. And I'll walk through the steps again. So as if I'm looking for my course reserve for the first time, I'm going to type in Anthropology 101. And I'm going to select the Cultural Anthropology textbook. So when this comes up um, to the description page, you will see the placehold button underneath Agnes Scott College McCain Library availability. When you select that button, it'll come up with um, a new page that you can put in your um, hold request information. So you can type, um, I would like access to this book or to chapter two on Tuesday 9.15 at 11 a.m. And then when you hit submit, we will go ahead and get that information and we will know, okay, we need to scan chapter two by 11 a.m. on Tuesday the 15th. And then we can share that with you at 11 a.m. So all you do is hit submit and it'll go ahead and let you know that you're in line um, to get your request. So back to the course reserves page. Um, another thing to be aware of is if you need the book longer, we are very willing to loan it to you for longer than two hours. Um, so even though the scan will automatically, you will automatically lose access to it after two hours, we can extend that um, per your request. However, if another student needs that book, we will have to pull it back after the two hours and give them access, which is just what we would do if we had a physical copy in the library as well that you were physically checking out. And another thing also to keep in mind is requesting when the library is open and then we, someone will see your request and try to get it to you as quickly as possible. However, if it's late at night and you know that you're going to need um, to see some readings in the morning, it's absolutely fine to email us or to put in a pull request. So also with controlled digital lending, we aren't doing this just for our reserves, but also for our general collection. So if there is a book in our browsing collection or somewhere else in our library that you would like to have access to, but you live out in Missouri or France or wherever, then we can still scan chapters and send them to you. And then because it's not on reserve, we don't have to pull it back after two hours. So if there is a text that you would like to have access to, we don't have an ebook copy of it, um, but you would really like to have it for your paper or just for general reading, go ahead and put in a request um, and just make a note that you would like a specific chapter or that you would like the whole item scanned and um, loaned to you for the full semester. And this is also an option with interlibrary loan, although we are getting books, um, we are still getting interlibrary loan from other colleges. Um, we are also able to just scan chapters and send them to you that way, if that is what you prefer. And one thing to note is that interlibrary loan does not offer eBooks. So if you do see, um, another library has a book and you, you'd rather get an ebook um, edition of it, we would not be able to give you access to that. We would have to either get them to give us scans of the book or we would have to get the um, item shipped to us. So are there any questions you have about course reserves at this time? That essentially covered um, everything you really need to know about how to locate and um, how to place requests for course reserves. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat um, or you can email me directly um, from the email that I sent you earlier this morning.
And uh, don't forget about the Google Form link that I put in the chat earlier. Okay, well, if that is everything um, and you have no questions, then thank you for coming to our meeting. I'm glad that we were able to have this course reserves webinar and I hope you learned something from it. Let's see. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and end this, so thank you.